The 2023 racing season has ended. We're in December now and there's no WEC, no IndyCar, no Formula E, no F1, no GTL Challenge, no NASCAR, etc. until the new year. However, there is still something to get excited about over the winter months, and that is the Asian Le Mans series, which begins this weekend with a doubleheader at Sepang. The winter series for endurance racing, Asian Le Mans acts as a championship for teams and drivers to prepare for the European racing season. However, there's more to fight for than glory and trophies, as the LMP2 and GT category champions will receive automatic invitations for next year's 24 hours of Le Mans. Let me give you a quick rundown of the grid, as well as the names to look out for, so you can start watching one of the most exciting championships outside of the summer season. First, a short history lesson in case you're unfamiliar. The Asian Le Mans series began as a plan to create an Asian equivalent to the European and American Le Mans series. After years of struggle and one-off events at Okayama in 2009 and Zhuhai in 2010, a race that was part of the International Le Mans Cup at the time, the Asian Championship would start out properly in 2013. Multiple years of shuffling categories and dubious grid sizes followed, before the series would be streamlined to just three categories in 2023. LMP2, LMP3, and GT. Let's talk about them. LMP2 is the fastest prototype class in the series, containing teams using, but theoretically not being limited to, the Orica 07 chassis. Every car will run a Gibson V8 engine, with Michelin supplying the tyres. In terms of lineups, every team must run at least one amateur or bronze ranked driver, whereas the other two drivers can have any FIA ranking they desire. Over to LMP3, the slower category of prototypes, where despite being free to run a variety of chassis, all teams have chosen to go with the Ligier JS P320 prototype, as well as a Nissan V8 engine and Michelin tyres as well. Their rules for lineups are a lot stricter, with a minimum of one with a minimum of one bronze per team being complemented by all other drivers having to be either bronze or silver rated, meaning that we most likely won't see any world beaters in this category. Lastly, the GT class. Teams there will run a variety of different GT3 sports cars, including Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Mercedes, Audis, BMWs, Porsches and Aston Martins. And as the rules regarding drivers allow for pro drivers to run alongside one silver and one bronze in each lineup, there are a lot of GT Racing's finest that will turn up for the season opener at Sepang. Speaking of the calendar, the season will start with two races at the Sepang International Circuit in Malaysia on the 2nd and 3rd of December, before a lone round at the Dubai Autodrome on the 4th of February and a pair of races in Abu Dhabi the weekend after to round the season off. All races will be 4 hours long, and when to put which of your drivers into the car will be crucial to a team's success. Actually, we need to talk about them too, don't we? Starting off with LMP2, there are heaps of teams to choose from, as we have plenty strong pros and a few very capable bronzers. One of the latter is Sally Yolich, defending champion and a driver that will be upgraded to silver for the 2024 season. He and new Corvette factory driver Charlie Eastwood won the title for DKR Engineering last year, but they've set themselves a tough task at TF Sports, who have signed GT straggler Michael Dinan to complete the lineup. The defending champions at DKR, meanwhile, have a solid, if unspectacular, combination of an experienced Tom Dillman and an ever growing Laurence Hur, who will be joined by Alex Matchell, a bronze that has impressed a bit in his first year of P2 competition. Proton Competition, meanwhile, field two lineups which could have been combined into a title contending trio, but they haven't. The good bronze in Giorgio Roda is stuck with Mr. Mid Rene Binder and a brilliant GT driver but inexperienced P2 driver in Julian Andlauer. Meanwhile, the epic duo of Harry Tinknell and the great Paul Loup Chatin will be joined by a lump in PJ Hyatt. Ferdinand Habsburg could be fighting for a second Asian Le Mans title, but he will be held back by a new Isotta Freschini signing, and perhaps the closest thing to an amateur we'll see in hypercar, Alex Garcia, who will be joining him at Nielsen. There are three lineups that do have an excellent chance at the title, and one of them is the 99 racing crew led by... Nikita Mazepin. He'll be joined by the quick Louis Delatraz and another fast amateur in Ahmad al Hati for another crack at victory, after getting two podiums last year. Even stronger is the Algolf Pro Racing No. 4 run under the CrowdStrike banner, with the company's CEO George Kurtz having shown to be a very capable bronze over in IMSA. 
Together with him, Daytona 24-hour winner Colin Brown and the young starlet Malta Jakobsen, who already started the series last season, they'll be strong contenders for the title. Lastly, and with perhaps the best chance of winning the title, there is AF Corsa. They won the Pro-Am class in the European Le Mans series this year. And with a lineup of Alpine ace Matteo Vexivier, Ferrari factory driver Alessio Rovera, and one of the more secure bronzes in Francois Perodo, they should be among the favourites. As stated earlier, LMP3 will not field such a star-studded contingent of drivers, which is in large part down to the lack of an automatic Le Mans invite for the title winner this year. But there are a few teams to watch nonetheless. Cool Racing's number 17, fresh off the back from a title in the ELMS, can trust one of the quicker bronzes in Alex Buchansov to fight for the title, alongside James Winslow and Indy Next race winner Daniel Frost. Frenchman Fabien Laverne missed out on the title last year due to campback rules, although he'll have a tougher challenge at CD Sport with two amateurs alongside. New Team Breton Racing could surprise a few people with Ligier European Series champ Minier Stefan and bronze driver Julien Gerby, who won the Michelin Le Mans Cup alongside Julien Henrion this year. Meanwhile, High Class Racing have to pray that rich kid Seth Lucas magically gains talent. Last but certainly not least is the GT class, stacked with a number of factory drivers all eager to battle for glory. Cadillac's Earl Bamba is here with his own team, Mercedes' Jules Gounon will compete in Asia, as will Fabian Schiller and Lucas Stoltz, all stars of the German manufacturer. Stoltz will actually be partnered by Supercars race winner Brock Feeney, making this one of the better lineups in the category. Reigning Porsche Super Cup champion Bastian Boos is on the grid, and so is a former title winner in Dylan Pereira. A few of the lineups that can realistically come home with the title are the number 33, containing Porsche star Matteo Cairoli and a strong youngster in DTM's Tim Heinemann the number 42 Santaloc Audi with Christopher Haase and Gilles Magnus at the wheel, and a Project 1 BMW led by British GT champion Dan Harper. Oh, and Sean Galele is on the grid too, but I added that mostly for comedic effect and F2 nostalgia. Before leaving you to enjoy the series, however, I must inform you that the races can be watched via live streams on the Championship's YouTube and Facebook channels making the Asian Le Mans series free to enter from a fan standpoint. And with nothing to do other than sit at home in the cold winter months, I suggest you check out this championship. With five races at some of Asia's best racing venues and two spots at Le Mans on the line, there's bound to be plenty of excitement and drama. Let me know who you think will win the championships down in the comment section below. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all later.